Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Now in today's we're going to look at shots like this. So I'm on the black here, I've hardly got any angle, but can I generate enough movement to get the white ball on and off the cushion and onto these reds? So in this video I'm going to show you exactly how I do that and the things I think about with my technique. Now the reason this shot goes wrong is because people hit too low on the cue ball, that's the biggest reason I would say. And because we're using a lot of power, what's happening is the cue ball already wants to come wide off the black. So if I hit just below centre, so I'm just a fraction below centre, and I hit it really hard, you can see that I've got two effects. I've got the white coming off wide because I've hit it so hard, and then of course because I've hit below centre, I'm also then generating a bit of extra stun. So I've got two things that are making the shot work against me. So what happens here is you actually have to hit higher than you would naturally think in your mind. And that's because the white is already going to stun wide off the red because of the power involved. So if I now hit in the centre of the cue ball, so I'm right in the centre. So you can see that time that the cue ball has stayed more coming into the, the middle of the table. So I haven't wasted the, the energy of the cue ball with backspin. Now, the other really important tip here is you've got to get the cue right through and past the cue ball. Now, I know obviously, yeah, you can't literally go through the cue ball, but you've got to try and get the energy of your cue and the power of this cue through the white and get the movement on the cue ball. So on a shot like this, I'll really feel like I'm extending my follow through. So I'm going middle of the cue ball, really pushing through, keep still. And can you see that time that yeah, I've really exaggerated that follow through and that's what gets that lovely movement on the, on the cue ball. So very, very important there that you don't want to be too low because that will send the cue ball wide and you also have got to make sure that you really exaggerate that follow through. Now one other thing here that's important is you don't want to be tightening up and feeling like you've got to smash through. It's all about being relaxed. The more I can be relaxed, back, right the way through. I can really get that cue ball movement. Now the one last tip that you're probably seeing happening here is because I'm higher up on the cue ball so I don't want to waste energy with the cue ball spinning backwards because that then brings me away from the reds. One of the things I'm doing here is I'm playing a tiny, tiny bit of left hand side on the cue ball. Now that left hand side just means that when the white hits the cushion it will flick off a little bit wider and come back into the middle of the table. So that's then enabling me to hit higher, little tiny bit of left side to catch the cue ball and then I can go right the way through it and the side is what sends the cue ball wide and make sure I go onto these reds nicely. So those are the really big tips there, you've got to not hit as low as you would think, have a play around with the different heights on the cue ball and really get that cue going all the way through the cue ball. Now this shot on the pink here is another great example of these two effects coming into play. So we're talking about hitting slightly higher on the cue ball than you would naturally think and really extending that follow through to get the cue ball moving. Now the problem here is that loads of people might think that you're going into the stun position because I want it to go along the stun line, hitting it hard. But you see the problem there is that I've made it come a little bit wide and a bit too close to this side cushion. And that's because obviously I'm hitting the shot so hard to begin with that that creates a bit more of a stun effect because I'm hitting it so powerfully. Also the power means that when the two balls hit each other they actually jump and the white leaves the bed of the table making it stay on the stun line for longer than it normally would. So if I want to get this to not go too far away from the black I've got to be careful that I don't generate too much backspin. It's so easy to do when you're using that amount of power. So I'm going to hit half a tip higher up than I would think again and then I've got to really exaggerate that follow through so right through and then that time just that tiny tiny bit of an adjustment has made the cue ball come a little bit wider and stay closer and into the centre of the table so you've got to experiment there the fractions are tiny between hitting just below centre and then maybe getting to about centre or even half a tip further up have a little play around really get through the ball that's what gets that movement and keeps the white in the centre of the table. So the last key shot on this theme of getting the cue through and hitting a bit higher than you would think. Let's look at this one. So not much angle on the black here to stun up onto these two reds. Now if I use my normal stun position and I go hard enough to get on the reds, 
The problem is I'm straight into that red there. So I've got to make that adjustment. I've got to come a little bit higher than I would naturally think on the cue ball. You're almost trying to play it as a more of a stunned run through position where you feel like you're kind of in the center of the cue ball. And then when you go through it, keep nice and still. And then you see that cue going right the way through the ball from where the white was. So I've really exaggerated that nice follow through. Lots of people think on these shots that you've got to halt the cue delivery somehow, but you've got to get the, the power of this cue into the ball and that's what generates that movement. So thanks a lot for watching everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to give it a like. If you're new to the channel and you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. That just really helps me to keep all these instructional videos coming regularly. For anyone that's interested in any personal one-to-one -one training sessions, I'm working on this very table, helping players to improve their game all the time. So if you look in the description box below, you'll see all my details there. Get in touch and I'd love to help you personally with your game. And as always, I'll catch you all in the next video. Cheers.